Hello and welcome to a new edition of Luminar Coffee Break. I'm your host, Vanelli. Now, our topic today, how to add sky objects to um, our images. Now, we've done this several times, but with the new sky um, objects AI tool, I want to show you what's been added. All right. So let's dive right in. It's great to see everyone again. And here we are. All right. So this is what we're going to turn this image into this. All right. And I'm just going to right click adjustments and I'm going to revert it to the original so we can begin. Now I'm going to come over here to the edit tab and let's just jump right down to augmented sky. All right. Augmented sky is where we're going to deal with the, the objects that we're going to add to our scene. Now, much like, much like we did with Sky AI, Loom, or, um, uh, Augmented Sky had kind of a makeover. So if we click on the object selection, boom, look at this. Now we're able to see what, sky, what objects we want to replace in the scene. Now, typically, I'd suggest you know, birds look really cool, extra clouds to a scene, you know, the giraffe, if you want to get cute or funny, but if you want it to be a realistic look in a scene like this, normally I always recommend, look, don't have the moon because it, especially a huge or a planet, it doesn't look realistic, but because we have a space, a person walking in the desert, you know, in, in a space outfit, guess what? Now we can add something uh, as cool as let's say, you know, a uh, a moon or a planet all right so I'm gonna add this planet here once I have it in place or once I add it I want to click place object if I scale or grab the corners of the object I'm gonna scale it proportionally if you were to grab it from the side then you're gonna stretch it out of proportion so if you want to keep it proportional drag from the corners I'm going to just slide it right into place and I just press the enter key to lock it into place. Now that I have it locked in, let's see what all of these sliders will do for us. Of course, the amount, if you look at the amount, more for like opacity. You know, how much of it do you want to show through? Let's go full strength. You could change the warmth of, of the image or choose relight and look what relight does. So Relight is going to be able to help you match it better. So if you want to make sure you match the object to the scene, this is where Relight comes in. And I'll click on Advance. And with Advance, here we don't have any trees, but the mask refinement, you know, if I adjust this, you're really like, well, you see it right around this uniform. But typically for the mask refinement, that's great when you're around trees or buildings and you want to adjust, you want the adjustment to where it fills in the fine details or the gaps that, that are in there. That's when you hit find the mask refinement. And of course, the focus, watch what this does. If this, the background, if the sky were, let's say, shot at 2.8 to it's really blurry, that's when you can match the focus to the, to the image itself, all right? And of course, we can flip the image. Now, with all, all that being said, what I want to show you is how did I know all of this? Well, if we come over here to Luminar, click on Help, and I click on User Guide, it's going to open up our, our user manual. Here, you just type in either Sky Object or Augmented Sky, and it'll take you right to... Um, the, the, the part of the manual where it describes what each of the sliders and tools do. So you can just read through this, and then here's the neat part, like I said, uh, objects uh, selection, you read through here, the amount. So whenever you feel stumped on which one of our tools do, jump right to the user manual, because in here, look at this, right here is how do I use the Augmented Sky tool? And it's the identical tutorial I just showed you. You have it here in one place. Then it gets better. If you want to add your own 
sky objects. You want to add your own sky objects, and you could either purchase them or create your own. Here I showed you show you how to build your own sky objects, um, and then you could use it with Augmented Sky Tool, and then also it teaches you here how to import it. So for this tutorial, yes, I wanted to show you how to use the Augmented Sky Tool, but if for whatever reason you want to take it, or if you forget what I just showed you, jump right into the user guide, and that'll actually walk you through all the steps that I just did. All right? Now, that took us less than four minutes. So while I got you guys here, a couple things I want to do is I want to show you how do you organize all this stuff? Because after a while, you'll start building a sky library, a template library, um, objects library. You'll have all these textures. You'll have all these incredible assets. Where do we put those? All right. So I'm going to show you that, if you could, in the comments. In a moment, we'll look at the comments. I'm just curious, do you take advantage of the Augmented Sky tool? So in the comments, do me a favor, please, and let me know. Yes or no, I use the Augmented Sky tool. Um, if the answer is yes, what do you use it? You know, what are some of the things you use it for? If the answer is no, give me some reasons on why you don't use it. All right? So while you type that in, I'm going to show you how I organize my objects. So if I come over here and click on the, uh, the selection tool again, I can come down here and show my custom sky objects. And now that just opened up all right here. It shows me not, not only this is what's so cool. Not only can I put images in here, but I can also create folders and those same folders, and let me hide this, those same folders will appear right here. Look at this. So the ones that I've added, how cool is that? I, I actually created my own folders and I put them in here. All right. Now, how do I organize them? Well, let me take you through. I'll go to my E drive. So here is my photography folder. I made it underscore photography because then it shoots it up to the top. Inside underscore photography, all the images I, I, I photograph, everything I've done when it comes to photography goes in that folder. And then I create subfolders and I'm on the school of, um, of thought to where I like using a person's name or a business name. And then once I do that, let's say, um, we'll come down here to, okay, let's see. Uh, okay, then, so I double click on uh, the Belladonna project. Well, then the subfolders, I usually put the date and I start with the year first and then just a brief description on what I did. So if I photograph them a dozen times, I'll have all of their images nice and neat in this folder. So using that concept, underscore assets is what I decided to do to put my assets that I use, not just for Luminar, but also for Photoshop or Lightroom. You can put any of the stuff right in here. So here's an example. Photoshop has brushes. I'll put brushes in here. So now I know where to go. So if I had to reinstall Photoshop for whatever reason, I know exactly where to go to get those brushes. So here we are with Luminar, Sky Objects. I double click. And now inside Sky Objects, if I, like these here, I downloaded from our website. I just put those in here into those folders, into subfolders. So now if I need to add any of these to my um, object, to my sky objects, I know exactly where they are. If I needed to add, let's say skies, I have a collection of my skies here. Same thing with textures. So that underscore assets, that's something you would write or you would create a folder, whether it's in Windows or Mac, 
And my suggestion would be to put it wherever you store all of your images, make a folder called underscore assets. Since we're dealing with sky objects, make a subfolder called sky objects, and then start building your, your sky objects library. Once you have all those set there, then it's real easy. And this is what's really cool is I can come over here and custom. So I can add, if you notice I added some of them already, I can click this plus button. Now I can add another object. So I'm going to go right to that photography folder we talked about, assets, sky objects. Now I can add from any one of these here into it. And once I do, once I, let's say we'll go to a planet, uh, let's grab this one. Click open. Now here's what's neat. Once I did that, look, it replaces it. And now it's also right there. Now it's also part of my sky library. And if you get to the point where you feel you have too many, 50 is more than enough. You can just come in here like this, click the one you don't want. Boom. Hit delete because it's only a copy. Hit delete. And then it'll also remove it from Luminar. All right. So that worked out great. And I hope that was useful. Let me know in the comments below if that's useful on how to organize them. Because I want to, not only did I want to teach you the tools, but once you start using them on a regular basis, you want a really quick way for you to organize them. All right. So let's check some of these comments here. All right, Ross Gary, it's always good to see you guys too. Ivan, um, let's see. Russell said yes, he likes the planets. Um, Ivan, I am trying to make some overlays. Okay, good. Oh, I like that. Snowy window frames um, or edges. Um, that's awesome. And Christmas photos. That that that's awesome. Yes, uh, it's funny because I went back through and I looked back at some of the coffee breaks we, we did, I think in 2019, 2021, or 2019, 2020, and one of them I added was how to add a rain effect inside Luminar, and I think I want to bring that one back, but now with the new sky objects, that may be a little bit easier, but by the way... Um, with the sky objects, keep in mind that notice, now I'll, I'll hit um, place object. Notice it's intelligent to know that that's a rock. Oh, let me share my screen, I'm sorry. So notice it's intelligent enough to know that there's an object here and it's being placed behind it. So in the case of rain or in the case of snow that you were talking about, what you may want to do is use up here add a texture because the texture will lay on top of it all right let's see real quick gary said explain that deletion process again okay so i'm going to jump right back to here now if i click on the drop down menu for all sky objects here these are the ones i've added okay so if I come down to show custom sky objects, I want to show the, the, these were the custom skies that I brought in. All right. So here's that new one I just did. Now, before I do that, let me, here's a good tip. If it's already in the photo here, replace it with something else just because you don't want it. You don't want, um, you don't want Luminar to get confused thinking, well, what the heck? You had that here, and, then you, and you deleted it, and now you um, are still having it in one of your scenes. So just a little preventative. That's a cool one. All right. So again, I'm going to come down, show my custom sky objects. Remember, I copied that one in. If I click on it, I'm going to hit delete. I just press the delete key. And now it's gone. So it's no longer in this folder. Luminar, data, sky objects, custom. So it's no longer my custom. 
But I come back over here, and I come down to custom again. Or I'm sorry. If I come down to here, notice it was removed from here too. All right. Um, let's remove this heart one. So for the heart one, I'll remove that one because it's, it's so obvious. It's right there. So again, let me, um, oh, we want the heart there, sorry. Let me just put that there. Here we go. So here's the heart. Click, come down to show custom objects. And the heart cloud is under this cloud right here. So if I delete this folder and delete that cloud, once I delete it, when we come back over here and I look at the drop down list, notice it's missing. It's gone. If I click, remember it was a folder also. Notice now it's also gone in the folders. So that's how you organize it. All right. So if I want it back, I'll show the custom objects again. Right click, uh, let's say new folder. Let's call this um, a cloud. Let's say clouds. And I'm gonna drag and drop this one. Actually leave that one here. This is what I wanna drag. I wanna drop this one into my clouds. I want to drag that one into my clouds. So now I just dragged and dropped those in. Now when I come down here, when I look at the folders, look, clouds is here. Inside clouds are the two new ones I just added. This one and this one. All right. So I hope that explains it. Not only shows you how to delete it, but also how you can organize it. So just, just think of this right here as just your, your regular um, finder window or your explorer window, whether you're on a Mac or a PC, and just organize them. Organize them the way you want them to appear on your computer, and then they'll appear the identical way inside Luminar right here. It'll keep the structure, and it'll keep what's in that folder. All right, Gary? So I hope that answered that question there. All right? Awesome. Well, guys, hey, thank you so much for joining me today. And if you have future comments, or if you have other comments, rather, leave them in the chat. And even if the episode is over here, put them in and we'll try to answer them the best we can. Or save the question for the next coffee break and then ask it during the live show. And as always, since you are Luminar AI members, you could join the AI or the insiders group at insiders.skylum.com. And from there, we do a one o'clock show where it's interactive on Zoom to where you could unmute your mic and just speak to the instructors. And we do the same thing here. We'll show you how to create or do a certain, um, or a certain topic. And then once we're done, we leave the floor open for questions about the topic, and then we open the floor up again for other questions that you just have on, on your mind. All right? Well, guys, thank you so much for joining me, and I'll see you at the next coffee break.